Okay, it's Cam again, digitalpaint.com. This is episode 4 for Digital Painting Photoshop series, and we'll just be looking in brief at the Photoshop tools. Now, there are tons of tools in Photoshop, each of these has a little sub menu with extra, extra uh, variations on the tools, but I won't be discussing all of them, I'll just be discussing the ones that apply to the digital painting workflow. So uh, the first tool we're looking at is the selection tool. I'll key for that is V. And I'll give you a quick tip for a good use with this one is you can select different layers if you hold control. I can just select this text layer or this this layer. So rather than me using the, the layers palette, I can select individual ones by control click. Now the marquee selection, I'll just it's pretty obvious the marquee selection, but there are some handy functions you can do. You can feather the edge, you can set it to a fixed ratio, you may want cinematic cinematic ratio when you're laying out thumbnails. Uh, when you're laying out thumbnails that are going to be um, you want them to be the same dimension or at least proportion as the final image. So you can go ahead and punch in the ratio or the size. Uh, the lasso tool it's pretty obvious. It's just a freeform selection tool. And we can do things like refine the edge. So that will give us different options for how it refines the edge that we're using in a in a more precise way, a more customized way. Uh, the magic wand tool will select different areas of similarity based on the tolerance level that you've set. Contiguous selected will select only things that are that are touching whereas without it selected will select areas of similarity across the, the whole layer. Uh, the eyedropper tool, it's it's better to use Alt with this one, so I'll show you the good use of this with digital painting. Is when I'm painting, just get a, a good brush out. So I can select a color that I might want. So say I want to blend colors together. I can use the eyedropper tool to select the overlapping color and form my blends that way. And it really saves you having to always go to the the color picker all the time to choose the colors. If you have a lot of colors laid down in your palette, you can just use the eyedropper tool holding Alt. The hotkey is also I, but holding Alt won't completely switch tools. It will keep it on the brush, but while you've got Alt selected, we'll have it on toggled for eyedropper. Now there's other tools, these are more for photo retouching. Clone stamps useful for for different things I suppose in illustration. Uh, more so I think matte painting. But you can have a play around with that yourself, I won't explain it too much. We have the eraser tool. Eraser tool works just like the brush tool. 
except we're taking away pixels, not adding them. And you'll see we have the same options for our brush presets within within the erasers palette. Uh, the gradient tool is handy as well. So say I want to lay in a quick back, you can just put in a gradient. And you can also do nice overlaid effects with the gradient tool. So I can just and you'll find uses for these for your own illustration. Uh, to change the color, we click up here. There's some there's some pre preset gradients, and we can also choose whether it's a radial or a linear gradient and so forth and we can reverse with these different options and change the the layer mode uh, the edge tool is a tool that I use a lot because it's really nice for for blending colors and getting nice painterly effects so you'll you'll find uses in your own illustration for this but most of all I do use it for blending colors and you can have a go with that yourself and just as the eraser and the brush we can have our same brush presets for that the sharpen tool is useful for nice finishing touches and the blur tool again. A uh, sponge tool is good if you have an area that's too saturated it's a quick way of you can desaturate areas using the sponge tool or saturate the area give them a real red hand red face might desaturate that hand a bit so you can change that so this gives you some nice control over your colors and the saturation level. The dodge and burn tool. These can be really overused, or I should say. Burn will darken areas. Dodge tool will highlight areas. And you can change the way it affects different values on your on your canvas by these this selection and also changing the exposure and we can use our same brush presets also I wouldn't really recommend that you use dodge and burn for darkening and lighting in areas it has its uses but I encourage you just to um, make it use a dark color and paint it in if you're trying to do a dark area. Uh, the pen tool, I'll explain in another video, but this is nice if you want to get some nice selections and we can manipulate the bezier points with the pass selection tool. So you might want some nice, nice shapes with that and you'll find it's in the made of work path and you can actually save this this path to a custom shape within edit define custom shape define custom shape becomes available when you have a work path and you have that work path selected Uh, the text tool, you can use it in painting. Uh, I won't explain it too much, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the the shape tool I've seen I've seen some concept artists lately that are using this in their in their work to lay in lay in some quick shapes. Some random shapes they might want to some jigsaw puzzle pieces around.
using this to make some some interesting shapes quickly. And and just as I mentioned before, you can create your own shapes. Just as you can see here, I've got the How Digital Paint logo. Holding Shift will keep it keep it square. And then we can even select that area and paint some stuff in. Do different effects like overlay, whatever. And going on, we have the the three D functions, those are to do with three D. I don't really use them. The rotate the rotate tool can be handy. Can work like you're moving pa paint uh, paper, it, which is a similar function from Painter if you've ever used it. And we also have better known as the pan tool, and the, the hotkey for that is just using the spacebar, which will toggle it on and off when you hold it. And Rotate Tool will only become available if you have your OpenGL settings set up in your performance, which is in Edit, Preferences, Performance, and we choose OpenGL, which is to do with your video card. And then, last but not least, you have the Zoom Tool, Zoom In and Out, or you can use Control, Plus or Minus to Zoom In or Out. But that's just briefly explaining the Tools palette. There are some other options here which is just choosing your foreground and background color and also for your mask mode on or off but those will be explained in further videos hope that really helped as a basic introduction to the tools and there will be more videos for